Thanks so much for coming today. Uh, we are going to send this out to the rest of the employers network as well. Um, and we're, we're going to do a little bit of follow up again to, to this session. And make sure we are getting it right. Um, so the plan for today. A um, little bit of reflection today, a little bit of a, a kind of looking back where we are. Um, we're in year two of the employer, Liverpool City Region Employer Network. Um, and I know everybody. I'm saying this is our, our last get together of the year. I don't mean this is the last get together before the Christmas party. We work in, in school years, so we will be back in September. I'm um, going to give you a little update about, about the network. Um, Jill's going to give us a bit of uh, a uh, frame um, what it is that we're doing and, and why we're doing it with so, some amazing stats from the new Now and Next report. Um, got a lovely success story um, for you today, um, which has come out of the Employer Network. Um, and we've got a guest speaker to talk a little bit about game changers. Um, and then I want us to just have a little chat. We're a, we're a small but perfectly formed group, I think, today. Um, just what are your success stories? Um, have you had any success stories? Um, and what are your plans for 24-25 engaging with schools and colleges in the Liverpool City region? Um, to inspire the next generation, um, me and Jill are dressed up today. You know, we, we've, we've already been out to an, an inspirational um, session this morning at the Knowledge Quarter. There is so much going on in the Liverpool City region um, and it's exciting stuff. Um, this morning, there was a book launched called The Animates. Um, and this is all about innovation in the Liverpool City region. And this is hopefully going to be going into primary schools. Um, asking about your 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 early memories of primary school, I think I just wanted to like rejolt into your mind what it was like. We, we've been doing a little bit of work with primary schools. Um, and it's it's been really, um, really amazing, really, really encouraging. Um, and I think sometimes you forget how enthusiastic young people are. Um, I don't want to say once you get to, to to secondary school, you all turn into grumpy teenagers, but there is a massive difference dealing with year six, top of primary, to going into to year seven and eight in, in secondaries. Um, and I just wonder if we're talking about inspiring innovation uh, and getting our young people excited for, for jobs in the Liverpool City region, at what age do we need to start? So I, I think it's a... It's a good little background focus for us um, today. So, bit of a network update. Um, we have got 189 individuals signed up for the employer network. Um, we are seeing different people attend different sessions. And that's absolutely brilliant. And that was exactly what we intended the network to be. So you could pick and choose exactly what it is um, that you're gonna that you're gonna go to over the last two years we have had nine master classes um, covering loads of different topics some some suggested by by you guys as well um and eight quarterly meetings but i, I like the fact that we've got circa 100 businesses across the liverpool city region from all different sectors signed up to the network um and again i just wanted to reiterate this is not about you have to stamp in at every single session we are trying to make it really easy that there is one front door for liverpool city region businesses to get involved for inspiring the next generation in our schools and colleges so you you don't have to recreate the wheel there's loads of programs going on and um, sitting um mostly uh, with with the careers hub and the and the 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 delivery partners around the region um, and some brilliant stuff has been happening over the last two years. So onwards and upwards, I say. Um, we're going to have a little discussion at the end of this session to see what else it is that you'd like out of our employee network. Um, and, and I'm going to I'm going to ask the question. Um, I'm going to ask the question, do we do we want to see? How tall we all are? Do we want to be face to face? Um, I always find it really interesting that when you go from online meetings, I, I I pretend to be really tall and I'm I'm not. Just seeing people face face to face is, is quite nice. Um, do we want to move our network to have maybe the quarterlies face to face? We'll do a little poll um later on um in the session. So that was my little network update. Um, if you've got any other kind of supply chain or friends that you think should be in the employer network, um, 
we might even need to get a badge next year. I don't know. Um, so you can say, oh, you're you're in the gang. Um, yeah, please let them know. It, it's about sharing the love, making sure that we are inspiring our young people to choose the city region as the next step in career destination. We want to keep them. We want to keep them here. We've got to get them inspired. Okay, so moving on. Um, I'm going to hand it over to lovely Jill who's going to give you an update on the new CEC report that is just being released in April. Over to you, Jill. Thanks, Michelle. Morning, everybody. Um, so on to the next slide. Yeah, I'm going to give you an overview of the Now and Next report, which we will um, share all the details with you so that you can actually go on and look at the exec summary and the full report as well, which has got a lot more insight into it as well. Um, but just a couple of slides to start off with. So just to kind of confirm what you've all been supporting uh, during the last 12 months. So we've been supporting 142 schools and colleges across uh, Liverpool city region. And then we've obviously got our key delivery partners that are supporting us as well. And then um, the next slide then just moves on to the Gatsby benchmarks, which again, I think you should all be familiar with now, which is the careers excellence programme that all of our schools and colleges are working towards. So there's been quite a lot happening over the last 12 months, two years around careers education, around careers education, information, advice and guidance. And this slide really kind of just summarises really some of the um, emerging um ideas what the government are looking at what the, what potentially you know future governments may be looking at as well uh, and this really is kind of formulating really our career strategy and has certainly helped help shape in terms of what what the hub has actually been delivering um, and as we move forward we're obviously focusing on 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 some of these reports and some of the select committee um outputs that have actually um been been being provided so moving on to the actual now and next report um what what this really does is it kind of pulls together really some of the government response to um, the careers inquiry. So there's kind of three really key areas as we start to move through the report. So we're talking around that um, unified career system. So it's very much around how we get everybody connected. And I think our employer network for Liverpool City regions are really good. Um, indication of of how we're actually doing that really really well across across city region um, and it's about that quality but also about the consistency so the work we're doing through the master classes I think really helps um, for you guys to get more support and training but also for us to to actually showcase what we mean by some of our key industries and sectors within the region um, and also the pathways as well that kind of link into that for our young people it then links into skills training and work and work experience. So again, you know, employers um, and you as individual employees are really playing your part there in terms of actually supporting our young people to get them work ready. And then the final part really is, is to look at social justice. So we, we talk a lot on, on these calls and in the wider context of the work we do around the most disadvantaged young people and how we're actually supporting, you know, 31 of our SEND schools across Liverpool City region, but also, you know, some of our young people who maybe haven't got that social capital at home. So how do we ensure that they don't get left behind in terms of what we're doing? So the priorities we had last year um, will remain the same focus for us as we move into um, our 24-25 academic year. So we don't envisage any changes um, to those priorities. And I'm not going to go run through them again. So. So moving into the now and next report. So this report's been done. It's the largest data set that we've ever, ever had in careers education. Um, and it really kind of builds on, on the progress that we've made in terms of building the career system. Um, it's been about improving the provision that we've actually had, but actually it's about securing better outcomes for our young people. Um, and, and that's a real focus for us. Um, there's, there's some key elements to this. So it's about that strong evidence that we've got, which is, is driving outcomes for young people and also the work we're doing with employers. Um, as it says on there, we've got over, um, I think it's 92% of schools and colleges now within, within hubs across nationally, across the country. We've had over 100,000 students feed into this report, 342 employers and some of our cornerstone employers have, 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 um, have, input into the report and the 1100 other business volunteers as well um, and then I'm just going to talk you through the five next next best, next best steps 
So just a very quick overview of, of I suppose, the progress that we've made. Um, and I touched on the Gatsby benchmarks initially, but you'll see there that nationally we've where we started from. And I think as a region, we started in 2018 at about 2.2 Gatsby benchmarks being achieved as an average for city region. Um, it's great for us that we were in it from the start. So we were one of the first 12 or 13 hubs that initially um, was launched in 2018. So actually, this truly is our five years of progress for us. As, as a hub. Um, it says on the nationally now we're at 5.5 average. We're actually at six as Liverpool City Region. So, you know, in terms of the work, the support that you've all been supporting us with, um, that's really helped to, us to drive our um, some of our key benchmarks that, that really you guys can have a really, um, you know, invaluable input in, into them. Um, young people are having more touch points. So as you can see on there, 96% um, of our young people are having at least one employer encounter last year and there's multiple um, situations where students are actually getting a lot more than that as well and that's what we want to keep to drive on. Um, there is more awareness of apprenticeships and we'll come back to that in a second. Um, benchmarks are definitely driving positive outcomes for young people. So it's so actually the, the better, the, the more we can sustain the benchmarks and keep improving them, the better the outcomes for our young people and especially around those that need more support as well. Um, and then the final thing on the bottom there is around employers. So 91% of the most engaged employers say it's helping them not only develop new talent pipelines and support young people, but I think actually around um, how you're actually developing your existing staff as well in terms of them actually supporting the work with young people. Um, and I think that's really come through with the employer standards. So, um, three insights that run through the main report is around what where, where we currently are and where we're moving to next but you'll know the next bit around we want to engage more teachers parents and carers and um, we still want to obviously galvanize and keep uh, providing more and more employer engagement um, and the final thing again is is around those barriers and i'm really really focusing on those that need most support so there's just a couple of slides here now that have pulled out the main report. This one kind of shows you at each of the year groups and you know that we start at year seven and we want to we want to do more engagement at, at those younger years. And actually, we're going to start to talk a little bit about primary as well. But you'll see there where um, engagement is um, from students in year seven. So we want to actually move that down. We want to move those along that line um, with the work that we're currently doing. Um, and I think it's interesting if you look at, at year 11, um, you know, there's, there's there's no difference in terms of um, where we were in 2021, 2022. Um, and maybe that's around, obviously, there's less goes on in year 11 because of exams. So again, we need, maybe need to look at how do we plug those gaps with year 10 and year 12s um, to ensure that there's more going in at those year groups to ensure that we don't kind of miss that level uh, in year 11. And the next slide, I think, is really when you look at actually where we are in terms of career readiness, but then when you look at the gender, um, split and again we always talk around how in in any student data that that that, that, that boys um, are always more confident in terms of the um, the answers to our surveys and you'll see there across all year groups that girls still lag behind but I also think it's interesting in year 10 where we're seeing no differential on girls whether they are classified as more disadvantaged with free school meals than non, -dis non disadvantaged so again there's something happening at year 10 and maybe some of that links to a lot of the work we're doing around health and well-being for our young people you know mental health um, and, and at that critical stage of, of, of for young girls um, at year 10 that maybe there's something that we that we need, need to actually focus on so again it's just really interesting when you start to look at some of the the data that's come out this report there's there's quite a um quite a detail in the full report around employers and there's some really good um information around some key industries as well um i think for me um what's what's coming out through the employer the employer report is is how what what you as as, as employers and individuals are actually getting out of doing some of this work with schools and colleges and there's definitely seeing more of a positive slant um as you become more and more engaged so again i'll leave that there for you to look at when you get the slides and this slide really, again, within the exec summary, it gives you a little bit more detail. But but these five areas here are around our best next steps. So so what we mean by coverage to quality is that we're very much around developing hubs across the country. 
Um, we have, I think, even in the last 12 months, been really, really focused around that quality and that quality in terms of where our disadvantage is. Um, and we need to be delivering, uh, you know, a high level of quality careers education. Um, and there are some changes coming with a new careers impact system that's going to start to kind of come through for the next academic year and the way that we're actually um, improving and continuing to improve um, all across um, the programmes that we're running. Um, outreach to intake is very much around the work that we're doing um, to get young people into jobs. So very much business focused. And I think some of you will know the, about the employer standards, which again, we'll share some of that detail where you can actually go on and actually assess yourselves in terms of what you're currently maybe not doing, what you are doing, um, and be able to kind of um, look at how can we how can we develop that further. And it's certainly been a really useful tool for us to use with employers who want to start this journey with us and Michelle's been doing a lot of work around that as well. Um, the third thing is interest to uptake so again we're, 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 we're well aware of um, apprenticeship and technical education a lot of our young people have got an interest in it but our uptake maybe doesn't match the interest so there has been a lot of work and there will continue to be a lot of work around how we actually emphasise that in some of our new cluster growth sectors, such as health and life sciences, digital and creative um, and advanced manufacturing, alongside other industries as well um, as we move forward. Um, margin to mainstreams really is around how do we develop more really with our teachers, parents and carers? Um, how do we... Um, bring more development through our experience of the workplace. So, you know, there's been a lot of talk around two week work placement. What does that look like as we move forward um, into next year? And is, is there something that maybe looks at actually a, an individual student um, going into different businesses during a week um, is maybe more beneficial and gives them more of an opportunity to see more industries. So there's a lot happening around potentially around experience of the workplace as we move forward. Um, into next year and then the final one is most and is most moving to all and this is very much around our inclusion um, so how how are we as inclusive as possible and ensuring that that we're not leaving anybody behind and certainly the work that we're doing across our SEND schools our alternative provision um, and just to make sure that you know we can provide as much support as we can um, where it's needed um, the final thing I just wanted to say is, is that we, ha we are starting to do some work within primary, um, hence why we've been to the book launch of the Animates this morning. Um, it's, it's very much an evaluation piece that's happening, has been happening. We're in the third wave, which is the final 12 months of it for the Department for Education. But again, this is around the all age career system. That, that there's a lot of discussion around the younger we can start to do some of this work with with our young people the better and um, and this is a really good opportunity we've got about 60 schools primary schools that are going to pilot with us during the next 12 months so um watch this space in terms of how we actually develop and start to support primary as well as we move forward and the final slide that's just in there is is the um obviously the hub um website the second one there is is if you click on the now and next it'll give you this the exact summary which is a really short and sharp uh, report there's the full report it's really really insightful um, and there's a couple of other links on there as well for you so i'll hand back to you michelle thank you Jill. i think we're starting to become the ant and deck of the um the the careers world i i, I don't know which side you stand on i'm not sure which is well, I'm slightly taller than you, so maybe yeah. that might be the, you know. <laughs> that might be the deciding factor. That might be the deciding factor, yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, it's just really good. Like, one of the things that we talk about um, when it comes down to the, the, the career side of inspiring young people, um, I find it's really tricky um, to measure a lot of this stuff. Um, and show the impact. So it's really good to have the the kind of data and the stats behind it, um, because sometimes it is a little bit like how how do you measure magic? If you get involved in any of the activities that are happening around the city region, whether it be given hour, whether it be um, you know volunteering um, to go into schools and do talks at, uh, and whatnot. Um, how do you know know whether that that's making a, a difference? Uh, and it's really tricky to measure from um, from primary school age as well, because again, if you go back and think about what you were doing in primary school, um, was it an inspirational teacher? Was it an inspirational day out to uh, a, a place where we're all very, very, very different? 
Anyway, um, so today I wanted to talk a little bit about um, one of the success stories um, that's come out of the employer network. Um, we were really lucky to get um, some additional funding um, two years ago to, to focus on, um, and I still don't know what the collective noun is for a group of game studios. Um, we, we have... We've, we've come up with a few things, but I don't think anything's been signed off. We've been working with a group of game studios um, to look at um, g games as a sector, um, the difficulties that they have in skills, recruitment, pipeline, and, and how we can kind of inspire the next generation. Um, working with an amazing group, we, we got together, and um, what came out of it was at its core uh, a pledge and on the screen is the pledge together we pledge to support the growth and development of games talent by working together to make our liverpool city region the best home for game development careers in the world um massive statement um but we think it's doable um so work started um just over 12 months ago um and the kind of um the underpinning um, story to game changers, um, I think it's on the next slide, um, if I can remember, um, was the numbers that have come out of it. Um, we've got nine founding members. We've now got 17 pledge members. Um, we've had some publicity around the BBC. We've got the backing of the Metro Mayor. Um, it's morphed into... To, um, a monster of groups. We've got we've got four different strategy groups because we we we've got a group of really really passionate people looking about changing the skills talent pipeline into the games industry. Um, we've got one steering committee. That sounds like there's 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 a round table there. Maybe we should get a round round table for that. Um, but that bottom bottom line is already we've inspired two thousand plus young people across the Liverpool City region. Um, and I think the kind of crux of that is together. Um, so I do think it is game changing. Um, and I do think it is dead exciting. Um, but don't just don't just believe me. Um, I'm gonna hand over to Alison Lacey, who is co-chair of Game Changers, just to get a perspective um, from one of our game changing employers. Over to you, Michelle. That's quite the introduction. Um, so, yeah, what can I say about the journey that we've been on with Game Changers um, has been amazing. And it's interesting listening to Jill's presentation. When I first went to the first um, meeting that Michelle and her uh, business partner, Ali, facilitated for those game developers to come together and talk about our skills crisis, as we were calling it at the time, um, I had no idea what LCRCA meant, what the Careers Hub was, how any of it worked. It was a real learning experience for me and I think everyone else or most other attendees. We, we've been getting to know this amazing organisation that exists sort of a little bit behind the scenes from our perspective. We didn't know it was there really. Um, but yeah, they, they are, we've described them as our Switzerland they are the people that allowed us to come together as different organizations who maybe in the past have considered ourselves to be competitors um, rather than friends. Um, and I think that coming around a table together and realizing that we were all experiencing the same challenges um, and those challenges around um, skills, recruitment and development within career as well for the game sector. So we, we got together and we, we really enjoyed hanging out together as game developers do. Um, we, um, we enjoyed complaining about things together. Um, and we had one meeting where we did that. And we, and we even got like pens and, and flip charts out. And we drew pictures and it was really good fun. And then we went back like six weeks later and we started doing it all again. And, <laughs> and we got to the end of that session and I think Michelle and Ali were like, okay, but like, what are we actually going to do? Like, it's all very well to talk, but what are the actions going to be? And the pledge was born out of that desire that we don't just turn up and talk or don't just turn up and complain and say, well, universities aren't providing us with 
you know, graduates that have the right skills, folding our arms and sitting there and shrugging, and oh, it's terrible, you know. We actually need to do something about it. And we identified in those meetings so many things that we felt we needed to change or that we needed to take responsibility for as employers, that we needed to to get involved with and and things like I said, we didn't even know that were going on that we could connect with. And we realized that we were all individually trying to do little things like those of us that had turned up to that meeting turned up because we cared about these things. And that meant we already were doing bits and pieces, but in a very ad hoc way with no strategy behind it and no consistency of message. Um, so all of this, this, setting a pledge was really just about holding ourselves to account and making it a very ambitious pledge was a really important part of that it's a very ambitious pledge because it needs to be to inspire us to take part as employees um but underneath that pledge are some just really quite easily achievable actions that each of us can undertake and then with the support of all about futures and the careers hub we're able to crystallize that into action um, because because they help glue us together. So we would never have been able to get this thing started without the support and we wouldn't be able to continue with it um, because it's going to have a long future, I think, you know. Um, and yeah, the strategic groups that have been meeting have been throwing up all sorts of new ideas. We're really excited about the experience of work that we're going to do soon, excited slash panicked, <laughs> um, where we're actually going to interact with young people, um, you know, in a very hands-on way as, as in different employers. So that's exciting. So I don't know, I rambled quite a bit. Does, does that encapsulate it, Michelle, do you think? Absolutely. Um, I, I, I'm laughing. I'm, I'm just, you always say the right words, Alison. Absolutely the right words. Thank you. Um, and you've just touched on something that, again that I was going to talk about. And I'm glad you've said you, you're terrified as well, um, because sometimes dealing with young people, um, it is it is quite hard. And I think people kind of just go like, oh, I'll just go into a school and do a talk. The whole idea of having the employer network and the kind of support system for you guys was to make sure that you're confident. Um, and you can get your message and your your team can get your message across. So experience of the work, workplace for the game studios. Again, this is all um, pilot or in, in games world prototype stuff. I've learned a lot. Um, we, for the first time ever, are going to do three days um, of an experience of the work people for workplace for 400 young people across the Liverpool city region. So they will get a real flavour of the games industry in the Liverpool city region. Um, and, and the whole kind of ethos behind that is game studios coming together and um, curated um, by by the, the hidden wiring, I suppose, which is, which is Oza and, and Jill and the team at the Careers Hub. Um, so our young people can see what's on their doorstep and listen to people um, who've had amazing journeys um, or, or, or completely different journeys. Um, you know, it's always good to tell a different story. Uh, people with the same accents that have maybe gone away to university, come back um, or work their way up in the, in the games industry. And they, they're going to get a real flavour of that over three different days um, in June. So we will probably, hopefully, be re reporting back and on how that the nerves um for the people presenting to 15 to to 17 year olds um were completely shattered it all went swimmingly well and we will report back in september um i'm really excited about it um because i suppose we're seeing the journey that the employers that have that have, that have come on um and it makes me super proud um to say that we've been um, a part of it so it really is just one of the success stories but I think you, you'll agree that it is you know it's pretty impactful what we've done over just um 12 months um kind of starting off with the the consultancy kind of two years ago um fab thank you um so and thanks Alison for speaking um just we've only got 25 minutes left um, so I thought we'd do this as a little discussion. There's some familiar faces around the room. 
Um, do we split into two, do we think? Two little groups of seven? A um, couple of people jumping on? Or shall I open the floor? Shall, we'll open the floor. Let's take the slides down. Um, plans for schools and colleges. I suppose I'm going to open, open the floor, stick your hand up if you've got any ideas. Um, what would you like to see happen um, for next year? Um, if I'm being dead honest, I would like to replicate game changes across different industries. Um, just putting that out there. Um, I think that'd be great. Liz. Hello. Quick hand off. <laughs> I guess I just wanted to flag. So I found it really easy to get in to the primary, but I'm finding it extremely hard to get into my local high schools. And I flagged it with Gemma, and she was saying they're not on kind of a list. I think with the Gatsby scoring, they might be doing okay, I don't know. But I'm just kind of sending emails and being like, I'm available to do this and just getting nowhere. We, we can help with that, Liz. We can. Um, is it, um, yeah. If you want to stay on and then you can name and shame, we might not do that in, in, a, in a public forum. Um, it is one of the difficulties that, that it, believe, and it might just be the time of year. One of the things that we've found at the moment, all the sessions that we've run across the year have been really, really well attended, especially the, the kind of parents' events that we've been hosting um, to do information sessions about pathways or information sessions about a particular sector. Um, but once it gets to kind of May, there's there's a the everybody just run runs and hides. And I think that's one of the things working with schools and colleges that they are in a completely different timetable. And that's not only um the school holidays and the breaks. Um but if you, and I remember back to that at the time fondly, as fondly when I didn't have kids, I've just said that on a recording. I don't mean that kids love you dearly. Um, but I, I, as a grown up, you, you don't necessarily work on that calendar. Um, it, there, there is a block of time at the moment where it, it's it's quite cold. Um, but it might be that we need to go into get go in um by stealth a couple of different ways. So. It, we can talk to you around the schools that you want to target, Liz, and, and, and definitely support you with that. Thank you. Um, Gemma, have you got our polls ready? Can we throw our polls up? Because we, we've got, a, as I say, small but perfectly formed group. Let, let's just get in a little little opinion on um, um, what we want to do. Um, here's a question. So September, we will relaunch our network. Um, do we want to do it face to face? Do we want to do it online? Um, and then I had an idea we could do we could do a tour. Could we could we go and have a nosy around some employers in the Liverpool City region? I'm not saying you have to offer. We can try. We could we could find some hosts um, as well. That might be an idea. Okay. Oh, bit of both. Oh, okay. Okay. So. What I might do is when we send the recording out, um, I'm going to ask that question again. Um, or we might do a mix. We might do the launch um, face to face. Um, time is precious and we, we we do tend to cram as many meetings as possible, humanly possible, um, online, back to back. Um, but it is, there's something nice about seeing people face to face. Thanks. That was great. Thank you, Deborah. Um, most people wanted to be hosted, employed in the Liverpool City region. Interesting. Okay, wow. Um, okay, so um, this is our last quarterly. I don't think we had any more slides. Um, I'm gonna say that magic word. We're gonna finish up early and we can all have a cup of tea. Um, Jill, anything else to, to add? I just want to, on behalf of the Careers Club, obviously thank everybody that supported us this year and obviously will continue to support us as we move forward. But, you know, when I talk about the results of, of what we've achieved in Liverpool City Region, we couldn't do it without all of the employer engagement and the support that, that we have. Um, and again, there's a lot of work that you're all doing directly as well with with with, with all the different schools as well. So, um, yeah, just a really, really big thank you. Um, and obviously we will be looking
looking at how we continue to develop this further. And I think there is something around maybe doing a little bit more of a face to face rather than online, but just kind of, yeah, yeah, doing that sporadically through through the next academic year. And we're also looking at for those of you that have attended our annual conference and um, we are looking at maybe slightly changing that up this year because we've done the similar format for the last couple of years. So I think there's something different and we might just push that to maybe after into the new year of 2025, but very much a much bigger, I think, focus for, 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 for us at that event around employers and the growth and what's actually coming, the opportunity that's within Liverpool City region. So um, we'll keep you posted on that as we um, go into planning over the, dare I say, it, over those nice quiet summer weeks that are not very quiet. So um, thank you very much, Michelle, and for all your support as well this year. It's been amazing. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Just like to the beginning when I, I just want to find out what question I'm going to ask Shia.